Here's a video from William Lane Craig's organization, Reasonable Faith, that totally misunderstands what math is. Why does mathematics work? Because humans designed it to work. Think about it. Mathematical entities like numbers, sets, and equations are non-physical and abstract. No, they're not. They are patterns of brain activity. They can't cause anything. Yet, for some reason, the physical universe operates mathematically. We use math to describe it. The reason it acts the way we describe it is because we describe the way it acts. As Galileo put it, the book of nature is written in the language of mathematics. Yeah, because that's the language we invented to describe it. Scientists do not use mathematics merely as a convenient way of organizing the data. They believe that mathematical relationships reflect real aspects of the physical world. That's because we came up with them for the purpose of reflecting real aspects of the physical world. Science relies on the assumption that we live in an ordered universe that is subject to precise mathematical laws. No, it's not subject to those laws. As Bertrand Russell pointed out, the laws are not behests like legislated laws. They are descriptions, and we don't assume them at the outset, we infer them from observation. Thus, the laws of physics are all expressed as mathematical equations. For example, Pythagoras discovered that when a vibrating string is shortened by half, it plays the same note one octave higher. Isaac Newton's observations led to his discovery of the law of gravity, a mathematical relationship expressed as a simple equation that enabled us to enter the space age. Mathematics enabled astronomers to pinpoint the location of a previously undiscovered planet, and James Clerk Maxwell used mathematics to predict the existence of radio waves. Albert Einstein, working with theoretical mathematics developed 50 years earlier, formulated his General Theory of Relativity, a pillar of modern physics. His calculations were later confirmed during a solar eclipse, when Arthur Eddington observed light from distant stars bending around the sun. This is where I think mathematical realists and Platonists and apologists who use their ideas get confused. They think that what's going on in situations like this is that a prediction is being made. That's not what's happening. Rather than relativity predicting gravitational lensing, it found that the idea of gravitational lensing was already conceptually inherent to the descriptions of other phenomena already observed. For example, the results of the Michelson-Morley experiment. If the Eddington experiment hadn't found gravitational lensing, that would mean that the phenomena Einstein was working off of when he formulated relativity hadn't been accurately described in the first place. To give another example, let's say you're building a truss for a roof. You know you want to make half the tie beam to be 4 meters, and you want the king post to be 3 meters, so you need to know how long to cut the rafters to get them to fit. Well, you can use Pythagorean theorem to calculate that the rafter length is 5 meters. So you cut some wood to 5 meters, you stick it into the truss, and voila, it fits. Wow! The universe must obey the rules of math, and God must must have made it that way, right? No. When you describe this section of the truss as being a right angle triangle, and you describe half the tie beam as being 4 meters, and the king post as being 3 meters, you are not then predicting that the rafter will be 5 meters. The idea that the rafter is 5 meters is conceptually inherent to the description that you've already given. By saying that half the truss is a right angle triangle, half the tie beam is 4 meters, and the king post is 3 meters, you are effectively already saying that the rafter is 5 meters. It's not a coincidence that the measurements of the truss happen to be logically consistent with the measurements you've already made. It certainly isn't something that needs to be explained by a supernatural designer. Then, Peter Higgs used mathematical equations to predict the existence of an elementary particle. It took 48 years, billions of dollars, and millions of man-hours for experimental scientists to finally detect the Higgs boson. How do we explain the astonishing applicability of math to the physical world? By pointing out the fact that humans designed it specifically for that purpose. The point of doing these experiments is to test whether the initial phenomena upon which our equations are based were accurately observed and described in the first place. If the results match what the equations describe, we aren't discovering anything new. These experiments only discover something new if we see something that doesn't fit our equations. In 1960, the Nobel Prize-winning physicist and mathematician Eugene Wigner published an article that stunned the scientific community entitled The Unreasonable Effectiveness of Mathematics in the Natural Sciences. Wigner concluded that the effectiveness of mathematics is a miracle. 
which we neither understand nor deserve. Yeah, he was wrong. Just as when you put on rose-colored glasses, the world looks rose-colored, when you look at the world through math glasses, the world will look mathematical. Thinking that the world is inherently mathematical when you use math to describe it is like thinking the world is inherently rose-colored when you put on a pair of rose-colored glasses. Why is mathematics so effective? Because we created it to be. Philosophers who address this question fall into two camps. Naturalists who believe that all that exists concretely is space-time and its physical contents. They exclude supernatural causes. And theists, who believe in a god who created the universe. This makes it sound like these are the only camps with respect to this issue. Not everyone who rejects naturalism or physicalism is a theist. Naturalists cannot provide a reasonable explanation for why mathematics applies to the physical world. I just did, though. It's just a happy coincidence. No, it's not a coincidence that our descriptions of things match the things we're describing. But this is no explanation at all. Nor is it the one I just gave. At most, naturalists can say that it's not surprising that math applies to the world, because the world itself just happens to have a mathematical structure. So, of course, mathematics applies to it. No, math applies to the world because we tailor our mathematical descriptions to our observations. But this explanation is unsatisfactory for two reasons. First, a great deal of mathematics in science cannot be physically realized. For example, imaginary numbers and infinite dimensional spaces. Although these concepts are useful, physical reality cannot possibly have the structure they describe. What are they useful for? They're useful for describing physical reality. So obviously physical reality does have the structure they describe. For example, take the number zero. By definition, a zero amount of something does not exist. Nonetheless, if I say I have zero cars in my garage, you can still picture what that means physically. And second, this answer still doesn't explain why the physical universe has such a stunningly elegant mathematical structure. Well, what would a hypothetical universe that couldn't be described by math look like? Would it be a universe in which 2 plus 2 equals 5 or some such thing? That's contradictory, incoherent, and meaningless. To ask why the universe isn't like that, I think, is to ask an incoherent question. By contrast, for theists, mathematics works so well in the physical world because God has chosen to create the world according to the plan he had in mind. This implies that without God, there would be a logically incoherent universe, which I think is an incoherent hypothesis. The first century Jewish philosopher Philo of Alexandria offered this analogy. When a king wants to build a city, a trained architect first designs in his mind a plan of all the parts of the city that are to be completed. Then he begins to construct the city out of stones and timber, looking at the model and ensuring that the material objects are built according to the plan. Mathematics and physics work so well together because the same mind that designed the universe on a mathematical model also built the universe on the same mathematical model. Again, this implies that things could have been different. There doesn't need to be a god to forbid 2 plus 2 from equaling 5. We don't see that kind of thing because such a thing is incoherent to begin with. All of this adds up to an argument for the existence of God that goes like this. If God does not exist, the applicability of mathematics is just a happy coincidence. As I've already explained, that's a false premise. But the applicability of mathematics is not just a happy coincidence. No, math describes our observations because that's what we designed it to do. Therefore, God exists. Eugene Wigner was right. The effectiveness of mathematics in the physical world is quite literally a miracle. So if you have a bag with only two oranges in it, then you add only two more oranges, it's a miracle that when you count the total, you don't end up with five. That's effectively what this statement is absurdly claiming. There's an irony in Craig making this argument. Counter-apologists will sometimes argue against the omnipotence of God by asking gotcha questions that point out paradoxical implications like, can God make a rock so heavy that even he couldn't lift it? Craig dismisses these these questions by pointing out that because they are paradoxes, they are self-contradictory and incoherent. They are therefore meaningless and shouldn't count as convincing arguments against God's omnipotence. The irony is that he's making effectively the same argument against a godless universe. In asking why the universe obeys the rules of math, he's effectively asking, if the universe is godless, why can't it do self-contradictory, incoherent things? This question is also meaningless and shouldn't count as a convincing argument against the universe's godlessness.
to everyone who helps me out on Patreon. You're a big help. Thanks so much.